Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Sequila. This is Timothy Flanders, the meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to another edition of The Imitation of Christ. This is an offering to the Fellowship of St. Anthony. As always, not all the opinions expressed on this program may reflect the opinions of other hosts at The Meaning of Catholic. And the Meaning of Catholic is a collaborative lay apostolate in which lay men and women offer up what they can according to the duties of the state and life for the sake of souls and society. This collaborative lay apostolate requires your support to continue running. So we ask for your support. If you become a guild member, you get free books, you get discounts to catechismclass.com. And you also get our primo content, which comes out every week. And uh, this week, we'll, I will be going on a special pilgrimage, and I'll be reporting on that pilgrimage, which is very special to me personally. I'll be talking about that. That'll be the guild content for the online guild. The Fellowship of St. Anthony is a lay sodality offering up prayer and reparation on the behalf of clergy and seminarians. And there's also an optional Bible study group, which is where we will be reading the entire Holy Bible cover to cover. Uh, this starting this advent, so that's coming up soon. Uh, in the chat, we've got Light of Christ Press. Welcome. Um, let's offer up our meditations on the imitation of Christ. So, th this is the imitation of Christ, um, Confraternity of the Precious Blood version, which is that the great pocket version that I, I really appreciate. But the website, meaningofcatholic.com slash resources, there's also a free version online. You can find this. There's a lot of different um, texts for free that you can find. So this is book one, chapter nine. Um, obedience and subjection. It is a very great thing to be under obedience, to live under a superior and not to be at our own disposal. It is much more secure to be in a state of subjection than in authority. Many are under obedience more out of necessity than for the love of God, and such as these are in pain and easily repine. Nor will they gain freedom of mind unless they submit themselves with their whole heart for God's sake. Run here and there, thou wilt find no rest, but in a humble subjection under the government of a superior. The imagination and changing of places have deceived many. It is true every one is desirous of acting according to his own liking, and is more inclined to such as are of his own mind. But if God be amongst us, we must sometimes give up our own opinion for the sake of peace. Who is so wise as to be able to fully know all things? Therefore trust not too much in thine own thoughts, but be willing also to hear the sentiments of others. Although thy opinion be good, yet if for God's sake thou leave it to follow that of another, it will be more profitable for thee. For I have often heard that it is more safe to hear and to take counsel than to give it. It may also happen that each one's thoughts may be good, but to refuse to yield to others, when reason or just cause requires it, it is a sign of pride and willfulness. Well, today, this, this, this week is, is once again a very potent lesson of wisdom from the imitation of Christ. It, re it reminds me of Proverbs 10, 17, which says, The... He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but he who ignores correction leads others astray. Also, the um, in my imitation, or where is it? <clears throat> the um, in my book, Introduction to the Holy Bible, the um, which is my indirect offering of reparation for all my heretical Protestantism for many years um, has the uh, the rules of humility from um, Father Ripperger. Now I can't find it. Where is that? I thought I had those. The rules of... Oh, here we go. The rules of intellectual humility. I, I love this. For Father Chad Riviger. This is page 83 of my book. He says, always be willing to be corrected by anyone. 
that's that's the same thing as private 17, 1017. It, it, I mean, it should be, as, as St. Paul says, charity rejoiceth in the truth. So if you happen to be corrected by someone, whoever they may be, and they say, oh, actually, you're in error because of this is this, you should rejoice because <laughs> we should be rejoicing in the truth. Oh, I didn't realize I was an error that in that way. Thanks be to God. Now I know the truth. Now I'm, I should be happy that I, I formerly did not possess the truth. Now I do possess the truth. Number two, adhere to the truth no matter what the personal cost. Um, number three, be content to be silent in a conversation. Be willing to look stupid. <laughs> Have you ever been in a conversation where, you know, maybe two people are talking and you're there too, and then you want to interject your opinion and because you have a strong opinion about X, Y, Z, but it's not really necessary. I mean, these two people are having a great conversation. So it's not, it's just not necessary. You know, you, you should be very reluctant to start talking. Uh, I certainly have a problem of talking too much because I talk for a living, you know, uh, so I should be trying in every single circumstance to try to be as silent as possible because I have a danger of falling into pride because I've, I'm already speaking for a living. And so every opportunity that I, I can take, I should try to be silent. Uh, number four, be interested in what other people say as a source of possible truth. This is a great one because, you know, meeting other people, getting to know them and what their what is their specialty? What's your what is your, uh, uh, you know, area of study? What what do you learn learn about? Is there anything I can learn from you? Um, and this is um, I think that this this brings it up all the most recent controversies and really um, it, it it I mean. It um, makes me realize it or just makes me think of the um, the fact that the controversies in the Catholic Church, the most controversial things, um, like the difference between trad conservative debating about Vatican II, um, these things are very, very recent controversies because they're only 50, 60 years old. Because they're so new, it is, I think it is ipso facto unwise and foolish to have a mentality where I'm going to die on this hill because of my own opinion. Because these things are so recent, they are something that we should hold very lightly. Because these controversies are there's such a great deal of study that goes into all these different controversies. And so we should be really willing to change our opinion, particularly when we speak of the, the traditionalist position, which is more often publicly criticizing the Pope and hierarchy, even though many so, so-called conservatives are joining in on that increasingly. Um, it's really a, you know, because this is a position where you place yourself as asserting your own opinion against the ecclesiastical authority. There is no man who should take any pleasure in that whatsoever. It should be a very, very reluctant thing. And in fact, this is exactly what uh, Michael Matt uh, expressed in his Articles of Resistance. He said this is a ridiculous, embarrassing position to be in um, that no one wants no one wants to do this this is a completely reluctant and sorrowful thing for a pious catholic to do to feel forced into position where uh, a father of a family has to stick his neck out spiritually because as thomas Kempis says to be under authority is safer if i'm just a monk under an abbot i can just obey 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 it's it's in a sense it's it's easier because I don't have to risk my spiritual health, risk the sin of pride by sticking my neck out and doing something publicly. But at the same time, we need to discern, is this a moment in the church where to be silent means to consent to heresy? 
is this a moment in the church where we have so many prominent heretical views being thrown around by all sorts of different ecclesiastical authorities that they are harming the faith of my own children? I'm forming my forming the faith of my children and teaching them their catechism. I I was just talking to my little children last night. We were just going over the basics of the Blessed Sacrament. You know, what is in the Blessed Sacrament? The body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. How is the Blessed Sacrament? Uh, how does it become the Blessed Sacrament? At the consecration of, of the Eucharist. And we have, you know, this is something that really did happen. The, I mean, the Dutch catechism was promulgated by the Dutch bishops, was which was heretical. It was undermining the real presence of Christ. It said that the particles were not Christ. Um, we had hotshot Jesuits come into town saying that the real presence is not in the Blessed Sacrament. You know, so if a priest came to our parish somehow and started preaching this heresy, it would be destroying the faith of my son who's preparing for his first Holy Communion. So what am I supposed to do now as a father? Since I have a duty to, to form my son in the faith, at the very least, I have to resist this cleric by telling my son that this cleric is wrong. At the very least. So I, I think every pious Catholic, you know, if you're a trad or not, would probably at least do that action. If not, confront the cleric face to face or publicly in front of others if necessary or leave the parish but the so these are all modes of different modes of resistance which pious catholics are forced into but i think thomas akempis warns us of the dangerous place that we're in no none of us should should like that i it's just a, a very sad state of affairs because what we should really be longing for is to just be obedient and just be under submission to authority. It's very, a, it's a, it's a, it's a bad, it should have a bad taste in our mouth to be in a position where we're publicly resisting any cleric. But unfortunately this is the situation that we live in. And so that is why we have the fellowship of St. Anthony. So we can, as laity, we can be fasting and praying and offering up penance. So right now in the time of after Pentecost, time after Pentecost, the Fellowship of St. Anthony is offering penance on Wednesdays and Fridays so that we can offer up penance in reparation for bad priests and also asking for, for merits for good priests, that graces may come down upon good priests and support them because they often feel isolated when they're trying to fight for orthodoxy and trying to treat, preach the faith. Um, so we're offering up penance on Wednesdays and Fridays. So we ask you to join us, join the Fellowship of St. Anthony. If you can't afford to be a guild member, you can always join for free. Just contact me, meaningofcatholic.com slash contact. Uh, you can join the Fellowship of St. Anthony. Uh, if you can't support us at all, patreon.com slash meaningofcatholic. Your support also helps us give free memberships because the only reason we can, free that, we can afford that to give free memberships to the poor is because people do support us. So supporting us also supports membership for, for poor members. And um, so, but uh, we encourage you to either join the Fellowship of St. Anthony or start something like that in your own parish, which is a, a lay sodality of prayer and reparation, offering up greater penance to make reparation for bad clergy and petition for good clergy. So that is, I think, helps us as laity when we're in this difficult position to really keep our focus on being laity and praying as we should and doing something that's the really the most productive thing we can be doing which is praying more and doing more penance that's the most important thing that we should be doing you know if you're in a situation as a lay person you're not even sure what you should be doing according to your state in life in this difficult time in the church Maybe you have a crisis of conscience. You, you know, your, your conscience accuses you or smotes you when, you know, you're in a situation, that, as I described, with, with bad clergy. You don't know what to do. Well, the thing we can all agree on is let's do more prayer and penance. So I encourage you to join the Fellowship of St. Anthony or start one of your own because this is the most productive thing we can do as, as laity. More prayer, more penance. So let's pray an Ave. 
in nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Mary, Queen of the Home, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. In nomine Patris, et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Jesus is King. Amen.